What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke, and you're watching Iron Mag TV. So, guys, let's just jump right into the action. And I usually have the intro, and this video here, we're going to jump right into the action. A lot of folks have been DMing me, asking me about Arnold's surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. And not to worry, as I'm sure you've already seen on a lot of the mainstream media, because Arnold is a mainstream person. He went to the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, and uh, he had an aortic valve installed. He also had a pulmonary valve from a previous surgery at the Cleveland Clinic. If you're not familiar with the Cleveland Clinic, it is by far one of the premier facilities in the world, in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, after the procedure, Arnold was seen all around that beautiful city where I have been many times for Dave Lieberman's Natural uh, Ohio and the Natural Northern USA which is a fantastic event there at the uh, Cleveland Auditorium where the Beatles played, oddly enough. Um, and I say oddly enough because, you know, guys, Cleveland, you know, from Drew Carey and all that, you know, Cleveland's got kind of like this rap of being like, you know, this sort of, you know, hard Midwestern coal town, you know, yet it's got a huge music scene and it's got the Cleveland Clinic. Now, Arnold is, uh, he's a tank, guys. I mean, the guy's a tank, but he is, for all intents and purposes, the face of bodybuilding. Of course, we had Joe Weider, we had Ben Weider, we've got uh, Jim Mannion, and we've got, you know, the reigning Mr. Olympia. But for all intents and purposes, Arnold is the uh, hands down, uh, unconditioned, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, he is the face of bodybuilding. I don't know how else to say it. He is the face of bodybuilding. Now, we know that the voice of bodybuilding is Bob Chicarillo, but uh, the face of bodybuilding is Arnold, all jokes aside. And uh, it's great that, um, you know, he's had... Uh, these procedures done and of course nobody knew about them before so uh, only after the fact which is you know big leagues that's how the big leagues people operate you know they don't go about saying you know he's not about putting an instagram story he i'm, I'm here at the cleveland clinic and to get my heart uh, you know no that's not how uh someone on arnold's level operates uh, no pun intended and the thing is is that you know you're talking about a guy who was governor of california who it pains me to say it because you guys know I'm a Democrat, but Gray Davis could mess up boiling water. You know what I mean? And uh, the fact is, Arnold wasn't just the governor of California like Jesse Ventura was the governor of Minnesota. Jesse Ventura, another amazing politician, uh, amazing uh, person that was involved in physique-based sports to some extent. I mean, he was a wrestler on TV, a major film star, and uh, like Arnold, became governor. But the difference is... You know, Jesse Ventura didn't, you know, inherit, uh, you know, a state in shambles, much like Arnold did when he won that really bizarre referendum. It was a, it wasn't called a referendum. It was called a, um, what's it called? I forgot what it was called, but it was like a re-canvas or something like that. Um, and basically a recall. And what it was, was Gray Davis had received a vote of no confidence from the California legislature that people were just totally just ugh, with him. You know what I mean? And the economy, you know, California's economy is, you know, bigger than most countries around the world, guys. California is a massive state. Unlike Alaska, which is mostly ice, unlike Texas, which has huge swaths of desert, California is a major, major state, guys. It's like a mini country. You know, you got San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco. You know, these are major cities. I mean, most states don't have three cities on that level. California does and it's got other cities like Sacramento that are pretty big as well Anaheim's pretty big as well you know what I mean so it, it's got a very very big economy so Arnold going in for surgery you know he's got his movie star cred his politician cred he's got his bodybuilding cred I mean and then he's got his business cred because guys you know Arnold's involved in so many different business ventures like Planet Hollywood which is what he and Sly Stallone were involved with and look at Planet Hollywood they're everywhere so you know, also speaking of that, Nick Strength and Power talked about how Jean-Claude Van Damme, Van Damme, you know, left a, a positive uh, note of encouragement on his Facebook page for The Oak. And so have many other big stars and huge politicians. I mean, you know, Arnold is a major driving force in our industry. So I'm very, very happy that the operation for his aortic valve was a success, just like the past one for his pulmonary valve was also a success. And it's not just that, I don't want to take anything away from the Cleveland Clinic, because like I said, they are the preeminent facility in the world. But Arnold is also, you know, an exemplary patient in that he's really, really strong. 
you know, he continues to maintain health and fitness. He continues to eat well. He, the aging process has not really taken a toll on him as it has on others. I mean, you know, so I think that he's a great candidate for, you know, open heart surgery. And not that I'm a doctor, I have no medical knowledge, but just from like basically seeing a guy who's fit, who's active, uh, who takes care of his health, who goes to the best facilities in the world, you know, I just think that, you know, we're going to have Arnold for a very, very long time, as we should, because he is the face of bodybuilding. Now, last week, I also released an article on Keon Pearson, who left Blackstone Labs a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, a few months ago, but it feels like a long time ago. And one Chicago, even though he was soft in the glutes, and everybody said he was soft in the glutes, even his own uh, peers on the stage that competed against him, who all said, you know, uh, how impressive he looked from the front, but he had soft glutes. And you can't take soft glutes to the Olympia, but that's not something that you can't fix you know, in a month or two, or something you could even maybe fix in a week or two. For whatever reason, he said that he didn't feel right, that he was like all over the place, that he wanted to compete for the right reasons, and so he withdraws from the Olympia. So this Olympia is going to be big, but I mean, my gosh, so far, Keon Pearson, the prodigy, has withdrawn on a much bigger level. Flex Lewis, formerly of the 212, who was going to compete open, who a lot of people thought could win the whole competition, also withdrew because of an undisclosed injury, which he later talked about, which was sort of rugby related. It was more preventative than anything else, but which I totally understand. But at the same time, you know, Flex Lewis is out. Big Rami gets that special invite, which we've been talking about here on Iron Mag TV for quite some time. But the more that I look at it though, I don't know that Big Rami really deserves a special invite because I think it would be really messed up if a guy won the Olympia who did not automatically qualify the year before was not a previous mr olympia did not win a pro show or did not get there by points so basically he's just there because you know the federation either felt sorry for him or wanted to make the fans happy who knows what but he's the only man on that stage in less than two months time at the zappos theater at the planet hollywood resort on the las vegas strip that did not earn his place to be there so if he were to win the competition and then be crowned the greatest bodybuilder in the world, I feel like that's an injustice. I feel like that dilutes the Mr. Olympia. Maybe you don't agree with me and maybe I'm just like thinking too much into it. But I mean, here's a guy who competed at this year's Arnold Classic for the first time in his career. He had never done the Arnold Classic before. Looked pretty good with Chad Nichols in his corner, but you know, he was no match for the symmetry and the cuts and the condition of Dexter the Blade Jackson and William the Conqueror Bonnack. So he took third place. He got some points for the Olympia, but not enough points to go. And, you know, then there were some great shows that he skipped. You know what I mean? He skipped Tampa. He skipped New York. He skipped Chicago. Of course, he didn't skip Chicago because he was in New York, which was first. But he very basically picked the last show of the circuit to compete in. And it was really honestly the easiest show because every other show you got to win first place if you want that immediate qualification or you get points. Instead, he went to this Europe show, which was like a throwback to yesteryear where the top three got an Olympic qualification. So not only did he wait for the very last show to compete in, but then he picked the easiest show to compete in. And there really wasn't anybody there to compete against either. He could have gotten first place in his sleep, but then he got COVID couldn't do the show, and as a result of that, got a special invite. So I, I don't really, I don't know that, I mean, I mean, it's almost like he, he, he sang a tale of woe and, you know, the Federation came to his rescue. But if it had been Max Charles, for example, who's been competing at show after show after show, if he would not have been able to get enough points, would the Federation have said, well, Max, we feel real bad for you, here's a special invite? I don't think so. You know, I think they were doing it because Big Rami will sell tickets. And if it's purely a business move, then I understand it because they need to sell tickets, especially after Flex Lewis had withdrawn from the competition. 
because a lot of people also don't know that Phil Heath's going to take the stage. You know, I personally don't think he will if he doesn't look good enough. Remember, he's got Danny Garcia and The Rock behind him putting, I don't know how much money on a documentary that's supposed to be something like Pumping Iron, but in Pumping Iron, Arnold won the Arnold, excuse me, no, Arnold won the Olympia. So could you imagine if they put all this money in a documentary behind Phil Heath, watching Phil eat, watching Phil train, watching Phil pose, and Phil comes in and takes fifth place, that ain't going to sell many DVDs or downloads. So there's a lot of pressure on Phil. And if he doesn't really look the part, I could see where Phil could say, oh, I don't feel so well. You know, I have stomach problems, you know, like my flight was, I mean, whatever, you know, um, anything but get on stage. I could see it happening. So, you know, with all those things, I can understand why they wanted Big Rami and why they want to sell tickets. But is the Olympia about selling tickets or is it the Super Bowl of bodybuilding? Is it the stage where only champions can take, you know, the stage? Is it the place where we determine the greatest bodybuilder on earth? Or is it that, but is it also a business? Of course it's a business, but should the business trump the quality? I don't think so. And the business doesn't trump the quality at the Stanley Cup, at the Super Bowl, at the World Series. So, but you know, this is bodybuilding and, and, you know, maybe bodybuilding needs to do that. I don't know. I don't like it. Initially I had said he should get a special invite, but in hindsight, I don't like it, but that's just me. You know, maybe you have a different opinion. So I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Iron Mag TV brought to courtesy of ironmaglabs.com. Be sure to use IML15 at checkout. It'll save you 15% off till the next week. This is Christian Duke signing out.